I'm not a doctor. I'm merely recounting the findings of researchers and authors and sharing the conclusions whilst conveying my own perspectives. Before we start on the individual benefits that are to be gained from retaining the semen, let us first focus on the overall main benefits of semen retention. Benefit number one. Overall nourishment and regeneration of the organism, creating conditions for a healthier and longer life. If we consider biology's summer theory principle, that reproductive activity accelerates the aging process, and consider the physiological value of the constituents found within the semen, it appears, at least from my own perspective, more than reasonable to assume the value of retaining semen within the body, rather than the expulsion of it. What are the elements that make up the semen? One of the most extensive texts I have seen on the makeup and ingredients of semen was written in 1956 by T. Mann. Number 1. Choline Research into choline and its interactions with brain functioning have concluded it to be a necessary component to human health. In a 2013 study it was concluded, choline is a dietary component essential for normal function of all cells. In 1988, the National Academy of Sciences, USA, issued a report identifying choline as a required nutrient for humans and recommended daily intake amounts. In ongoing studies, we are finding that men have a higher requirement than do postmenopausal women. The availability of choline for normal development of brain is critical. We suggest that choline-rich foods are an important component of the diet and that especially during pregnancy it would be prudent to include them as part of a healthy diet. Mammalian seminal plasma represents one of the richest natural sources of free choline and water-soluble choline compounds. Chemical analysis has revealed that the semen is very rich in choline and furthermore that choline is found to be present through the body within the cells. Choline is found all throughout the body's organs too in lower amounts than the amount found present in ejaculated semen. Compared with other animal tissues and body fluids, semen ranks as one of the richest sources of choline. It owes its high choline content to the seminal plasma and not to spermatozoa as such. In rat, Fletcher, Best and Solant found the following distribution of total choline milligrams per 100 grams. Seminal fluid, 514 brain 325, liver 260, pancreas 232, stomach 152, uterus 74, fat 23, blood 22. The composition is similar in other species, including man, where values exceeding 2000 milligrams per 100 milliliters of semen have been observed. The general importance of choline in the lipid metabolism of animals was first brought to light in 1932 when Best and his co-workers demonstrated that the appearance of the fatty livers in rats fed a choline deficient, high fat diet could be prevented by dietary supplements of choline. In 1939, Divigno and his co-workers discovered that choline is an important dietary source of methyl groups for the living animal and this led to the recognition of choline as a participant in transmethylation processes. These three fundamental functions probably represent the clue to the understanding of the manifold symptoms associated with choline deficiency. Among the various manifestations of choline deficiency, those concerned with reproduction are particularly striking. Choline is known, for example, to be essential for egg production in the chicken, as well as for normal lactation and nutrition in rats. There is also evidence in humans that choline deficiency leads to problems in the liver. Healthy humans fed diets deficient in choline and humans fed parentally have decreased plasma choline concentrations and develop liver dysfunction that is similar to that seen in choline deficient animals. In experimental animals, fatty liver occurs in choline deficiency because phosphatidylcholine synthesis is required for very low density lipoprotein secretion. This accumulation of lipids in the liver may explain why choline deficient rats spontaneously develop hepatocarcinoma. 
Although there is room for further study on this component, the benefits of choline and its key role in various bodily functions and organ maintenance have been well established, and to be constantly expelling this through ejaculation seems counterintuitive to good health. Number 2. Lecithin Another substance found in semen is lecithin. Lecithin describes a group of fatty substances found in plant and animal tissues. Lecithin is essential for proper biological function. It is said that lecithin is a substance necessary for nutrition of the nerves in the brain. The semen is a viscid albuminous fluid alkaline in reaction which is very rich in calcium and phosphorus, also in lecithin, cholesterol, albumin, nucleoproteins, iron, vitamin E, etc. In the ejaculation of the normal man, about 226 million spermatozoa are given off. These are rich in phosphorized fats, lecithin, cholesterol, the parent source of sex hormones, nuclear proteins, and iron. An ounce of semen is considered to be equal in value to 60 ounces of blood, of which it constitutes an extract of some of its most valuable of constituents. As far as its vitalizing power is concerned, Dr. Friedrich McCann remarks on this point. From what has been stated, it must be admitted that the spermatic fluid does possess potentialities justifying the belief of ancient writers concerning its vital properties. The presence of lecithin and other substances found in the semen is said to be remarkably similar to the nervous tissues. Some years ago, the author received the following interesting letter from a reader of this writings. July 29, 1936 Dear Dr. Sigmeister, I was wondering if the draining at any time of the lecithin and phosphorus and other valuable substances during any sexual act hindered achievements of the higher intellectuality and if the brain and body were debilitated. Please answer this very important question. I am having great difficulty to understand how a person as myself can store up vast amounts of sex forces without expending it. To make a long story short, I do not understand the very function of the sexual apparatus. Please send me any literature that you have on hand concerning this matter and I will greatly appreciate it. Also refer me to some excellent books which will cover this subject in full. I beg of you, do not neglect answering any questions asked in this letter. Thank you. To this letter, he made the following reply. Dear Mr. L, you ask whether the draining from the body of lecithin and phosphorus through the sexual act will hinder the highest intellectual achievement and debilitate body and brain. Most definitely this is the case. Read my article on Do Neuroses and Psychoses Have a Chemical Origin? in the June 1936 issue of The Modern Psychologist, in which I show that the loss of these nerve and brain foods through sexual indulgence in any form deprives the nerves and brain of needed nourishment and leads to nervous and mental disorders. According to this point of view, neurasthenia may be considered as representing a condition of phosphorus deficiency, or rather, lecithin deficiency. For lecithin is the form in which phosphorus is present in the myelin sheaths of the nerves. The nerve oil whose burning keeps the fires of nerve vitality burning. Since lecithin is a prominent constituent of the semen, we can understand why excessive loss of semen can cause nerve starvation and all the symptoms of neurasthenia. When the lack of lecithin and organic phosphorus is more serious, the brain itself suffers lecithin deficiency and becomes disturbed in its functioning, just as any other starved organ is when deprived of the elements it requires for its normal nutrition and functioning. Number 3. Spermine and Spermidine Spermidine is a polymine, meaning it has two or more primary amino groups. It is naturally occurring and is widely encountered in ribosomes and living tissues. It plays a critical role in cell function and survival. Spermidine occurs naturally in all cells throughout the body and regulates vital cellular functions such as protein synthesis as well as cell proliferation and differentiation. When human semen had stood a little while, some three-sided bodies were seen in it, 
terminating at either end in a point. Some were of the length of the smallest grain of sand, and some were a little bigger, as in Fig A. They were further as bright and clear as if they had been crystals. Thus, in a letter of November 1677 addressed to the Royal Society, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek reported the discovery of the crystalline substances in semen which later became known as spermine. Dudley, Rosenheim and Starling also succeeded in the isolation of spermidine. So far as spermine in human semen is concerned, there can be little doubt that its high concentration, which is of the order of 50 to 250 milligrams per 100 milliliters, is due chiefly to the prostatic secretion. In 2009, a research paper on spermidine found that administration of spermine, a polymine, whose concentration declines during aging, extends lifespan in yeast, flies, worms, and in human immune cells. Spermidine prevents early oxidative stress and necrotic cell death and increases the expression of autophagy genes by inhibiting histone acetyltransferase action on histone H3. In a study in 2017 on spermidine, it was concluded that spermidine prolongs lifespan and prevents liver fibrosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. Number 4. Zinc. Zinc is a mineral that is found in particular abundance within the semen and prostate. Among the chemical peculiarities of the prostate gland is its rather high content of zinc. The first to observe this and to comment on the possible role of zinc in reproduction was Gabriel Bertrand. More recently, Mawson and Fisher in Canada found that the mean zinc content of the human prostate gland was 68.2 milligrams per 100 grams, which is in considerable excess of zinc content in human liver, muscle, brain, testes or blood. These investigators state that the zinc present in the human seminal plasma is derived chiefly from the prostatic secretion. Zinc plays many key roles in bodily function. We may not even yet know the full extent of its functionality, however deficiency in this valuable mineral has been well documented and can be recognized by the appearance of various diseases. Zinc is one of the most important trace elements in the organism, with three major biological roles as catalyst, structural and regulatory ion. Zinc binding motifs are found in many proteins encoded by the human genome physiologically and free zinc is mainly regulated at the single cell level. Zinc has critical effect in homeostasis, in immune function, in oxidative stress, in apoptosis and in aging, and significant disorders of great public health interest are associated with zinc deficiency. In many chronic diseases, including atherosclerosis, several malignancies, neurological disorders, autoimmune diseases, aging, age-related degenerative diseases, and Wilson's disease, the concurrent zinc deficiency may complicate the clinical features, affect adversely immunological status, and increase oxidative stress, and leads to the generation of inflammatory cytokines. In these diseases, oxidative stress and chronic inflammation may play important causative roles, it is therefore important that status of zinc is assessed in any case and zinc deficiency is corrected, since the unique properties of zinc may have significant therapeutic benefits in these diseases. All of the constituents mentioned, although serving their own particular functions, are all working together towards a greater aim for the body, that is, the overall maintenance, preservation and regeneration of the organism. If we keep these valuable elements stored within the body, then it is reasonable to assume that our body should function at a more optimal level than if we were to regularly expel such precious resources. It is also reasonable to assume we can experience a longer and even healthier existence. Conversely, a continued and excessive loss of semen could result in the development of chemical deficiencies in the body that may induce oxidative stress and accelerate the overall aging process, among many other destructive processes. 
This is not an empirical fact, yet research, anecdotal evidence and personal observation lead me to believe this as true.